Unit 33, questions 102 to 103. Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy tends to come up on the GAMS head a lot, so it's, uh, it's a good idea to get it straight in your mind. Okay, so for uh, question 102, for the changes that occur when steam's, steam condenses. Okay, so I hear a statement like that, I say, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, uh, let's take it one step at a time to make sure that um, uh, we're, we're getting it straight. Um, let's do it the other way that we're more accustomed to, and that's liquid water, when liquid water goes to steam. Okay, so when liquid water goes to steam, that's something very clear and easy, and we know where to put energy, because if you had to choose, do you put energy on the left or to the right side of this, I think you would agree that if you want to boil water, you have to give the water some energy. So this is how you do it. So liquid water plus energy leads to steam. Now uh, it's, and of course, liquid water is more organized than steam, which has um, entropy, which means tenderness, Tend, um, it's tending towards randomness because molecules are bouncing off of walls and, and so on. So, um, okay, so now though, they're asking what is the change when steam condenses. Now we can turn it around and say, okay, I know that steam goes to liquid water plus energy. So energy is being given off in the reaction. This is called an exothermic reaction, and that means delta H is negative for exothermic. This reaction is going from steam to liquid water. That means it's getting more organized. So that means entropy is going down, and therefore delta S uh, must be negative. So therefore, uh, 102, the answer must be B, where both delta S and delta H are negative. Now 103, the oxidation of mercury is given, um, uh, let's see, so the entropy is negative, we can't be surprised that the entropy is negative for the reaction that they gave us, because they have liquid and gas making solid, so we're not surprised to see negative entropy. And the reaction will occur under what conditions? Well, uh, it's easy for us to determine under what conditions the reaction will occur. We write out the Gibbs free energy equation, where delta G is equal to um, negative... Okay, so how many joules do we have there? We have my, delta H is minus 91 um, kilojoules, which it means it's minus 91,000 joules. And uh, that's minus... Uh, the temperature, the temperature of course is going to be in uh, degrees Kelvin, but I'll just put T for now. And always remember that the temperature T can never be less than zero. It'll never be negative because of the absolute zero for Kelvin. Um, first of all, absolute zero has never been obtained exactly, and, uh, and so definitely you can't go below uh, absolute zero. And then this is multiplied by delta S which is minus 172. So, um, now when you look at this reaction, you have to understand that if this reaction is to be spontaneous at all, delta G has to be negative. Delta G is negative for spontaneous reactions, it's equal to zero for reactions at equilibrium, and it's positive for, of course, non-spontaneous reactions. So when you look at this reaction, you have to think that, um, watch, if this is negative times a negative, uh, this here, of course, uh, will become positive. And so if this uh, becomes too positive, too high, then this obviously uh, will become positive overall. So that's the issue at hand. So, but if T is very low, for example, let's take an extreme example. There is no such thing as uh, that it could be zero, which is the absolute zero, but let's pretend, because it you know, could be very low at least. So if it was zero, then this whole thing is zero, delta G is negative, perfect, spontaneous reaction. 
But if T is like, uh, you know, a thousand or something, if T's a thousand, it's high, then it will make this a very big positive number and it will overpower delta H. So in other words, this reaction can only occur spontaneously if the temperature is below a certain value.